Vicente Fernandez, Jenny Rivera, Chalino Sanchez, what do they all have in common? They're all Mexican joys in our culture. If you are Hispanic, then you know of these people. And just like you know these people, if you're Hispanic, you obviously know about La Rosa de Guadalupe. If you don't know what La Rosa de Guadalupe is, basically to sum it up, imagine a, a soap opera that talks about, you know, themes and dumb, try to tackle social issues or whatever in a really dumb fashion. You hire a bunch of trashy actors, you get them together, you know, the main protagonist gets in some deep shit, and then right when everything is going down, I don't know where, in the sky, conveniently next to the protagonist, a beautiful white rose appears. But it's not just any rose, it's La Rosa de Guadalupe. Or for my English people out there, the... And then after this rose appears, suddenly all the problems are fixed. And then, in the distance, once these problems are fixed, a subtle breeze goes through the air as to signify that the blessing has been occurred. <laughs> so basically, after the wind blows in their faces, all the problems seem to just poof magically disappear, and then we get the moral of the story, which, uh, we'll see how today's episode goes. This TV show is as much of a Mexican joy as it is, uh, <laughs> as it is, uh, trashy, I'm not gonna lie. One of my favorite things to do is to watch the show and just trash a lot, and I figured, hey, we're in quarantine, you're in quarantine, you and I are in quarantine, so why not make fun of this show together? Just a disclaimer, this video is not to make fun of religion, but only to make fun of the show. So, with that being said, let's continue. Basically, this little girl right here is jealous that this little girl right here has been born and she's afraid that she won't be the preferred child anymore. Something all older siblings can relate to at some point, I guess. I don't know. Let's see what, uh, let's see what idiotic shit this little girl starts to brew up. ¿Quieres cargar? No quiero verla! Porque todos van a quererla más que a mí y a, y a ella le compran más cosas. Una cunita, ropita, juguetes y a mí nada. Damn! Uh, I've never seen a little kid react like that. Do you guys know a little shit that acts like this? Also, uh, in the making of this video, I might uh, switch between Spanish and English. So I'll also put subtitles for my non-Spanish speaking friends out there. We then cut to a few years later, following that incident with the family enjoying a breakfast together, where I'm sure the older sister, Mamona, isn't gonna start anything with the parents over nothing. Pa, anoche no me diste el dinero que te pedí para comprar las libretas de dibujo. Aquí tienes, le das el cambio a tu mamá, eh, y quiero ver esos dibujos. ¿Desconfías que no voy a comprar las libretas o qué? No, no desconfío, hija. Bueno, ¿por qué siempre estás a la defensiva, eh? Échale ganas, eh, cálmese. Yo siempre le echo ganas, papá. Really? I'm surprised that the mom didn't chase this girl and give her a beatdown, because that's what my mama would have done. She. No me pasa de creer que esa familia es mexicana, porque si no, le da la chancla. <laughs> Something I forgot to say. All the children are cabrones with their freaking parents. Like, what is that? Like, if I were to talk to my dad like that, my mom would say, Pah! Like, what? So then we cut to a scene after breakfast where the older sister begins ripping apart her younger sister's dress for her school graduation and then goes off on her sister saying about how much she really loves and cares for her. Única culpable de todo es ella. Por eso la odio. Te odio, te odio. <laughs> what? Again, where's the beatdown? Where's the smackdown from the mom? I mean, the grandma's even there. Oh my goodness. This... No manches, this no puede ser familia mexicana. No, no, no. Uh, like, oh, what? Like, oh, what? So you get mad that your sister gets a dress before you do. That's some girl shit right there. <laughs> But of course, this being La Rosa de Guadalupe, we need some drama and a reason for the show to continue. So the younger sister proceeds to chase after her older sister, begging for a way in which she will love and accept her. ¿Qué puedo hacer para que me quieras? Dime y lo hago, pero por favor, quíreme. ¿De verdad harías lo que sea? Sí. A ver si es cierto. Ve y agárrale dinero a mi mamá. Y dime a comprar unos chocolates. I see where this episode is going to head down. I, I, I can already tell. If you, if you know this show, you know where it's going to head down. And oh my goodness, this sister's going to be up. We're then treated to a scene in which the younger sister and a friend who clearly has a crush on her dares ask the question that all men dare to ask. Si quieres ser mi novia. Si, si lo pensé, pero no quiero ser tu novia. Discúlpame. 
they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And while hearts are being broken on the other side of town, her older sister drops a bombshell so that the show can continue being dramatic and add more people into the mess. Sí, Pedro. Estoy embarazada. Cringy. Uh, did this girl say she's pregnant? Like, 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 what the hell? You don't even love your own little sister. How the hell are you gonna love a baby? They then go over to the older sister's parents' house to try to convince them to go to the wedding day. But of course, even on what's supposed to be the happiest day, even when she said that they're supposed to be together like a family, she can't help but being as huge. Siempre he querido ser como tú. Pero nunca lo vas a poder ser, hermanita. Porque tú eres fea, insignificante, no eres nada, no eres nadie, que no se te olvide nunca. No eres nada y nunca vas a poder ser como yo. Bro, this girl is the biggest bitch I've ever seen. We are then introduced to the older sister and the younger sister meeting after the birth of her child. And when they appear to be friendly, the older sister offers a job to the younger sister at her husband's work. <laughs> that seems like a very enthusiastic waitress. Being that she can't stand to see her sister happy and successful, she decides to make a plan to make her sister's life a living hell while she is at work. Vas a tener que quedarte más tarde, eh, porque los asientos de las sillas están muy sucios. Tenemos que limpiarlos y también los manteles. Does, does the husband not realize like what a pain in the ass his wife is being to like his who is that? Would that be your sister-in-law? To your sister-in-law like no no manches, este hombre no puede ser tan tonto. And then of course this leads to a scene in which the younger sister is left crying in front of her brother-in-law and then she begins to explain to her brother-in-law why she is very upset. <laughs> because coronavirus killed my plans for 2020. <laughs> Does she think he's trying to pipe or what? Oh my gosh. This girl is dumb. Like, oh. This girl has the IQ of a mole rat. Like, Jesus, like, you got your husband who's like 20 something, a father, and this girl who's like a freshman, sophomore in high school. Fucking, oh my god, this girl is such an idiot. So then the younger sister grows a pair and decides to confront her sister and to finally tell her the truth about how she really feels. Una cerda, una marrana, entiéndelo. Tú nunca debiste haber nacido, nunca. Por eso te odio, te odio. Te deseo la muerte, te la deseo. ¿Qué estás esperando para alargarte? ¡Vámonos! <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'm not laughing at what she said. What she said is fucked up. But look at that face she's making. Look at it! She knows she fucked up the second her husband came out. Televisa, they're like up there with Univision with like budget and everything. Like, y eso que estamos mirando la Rosa Guadalupe y la Rosa todavía no ha aparecido, eh? Me hace tan extraño. So then we meet at the hospital in which the older sister is not present because she feels guilty about the car crash. And we learn that she is in a bit of a critical condition. And then they finally begin to pray to the Virgin Mary. In which la Rosa finally begins to appear. Yes, bless. Bless, bless. And then through the power of La Rosa de Guadalupe, the younger sister makes a full recovery and plot twist, the older sister sees a psychologist to help her understand why she hates her sister. Ah, and then of course we can't forget the critical scene at the end of every episode before La Rosa disappears. So you're telling me, <laughs> you're telling me the Virgin Mary waited until the little girl almost died, then said, 
no, bless, bless. Y después todo cerebro. No manches. Well, uh, that's an episode. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, uh, drop a like and let me know if you want to see more of these uh, in the future. I, I have to admit, I have a guilty pleasure of enjoying La Rosa de Guadalupe. Like, I've, I've watched it for years. It's a, it's a strange addiction. Yes, yes it is indeed. However, uh, if you guys enjoyed me making fun of this show, uh, breaking it down, let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of these. And hey, if you have a show that you would like me to make fun of and break down, uh, leave it in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to take requests because I love all you guys. And uh, breaking news. Uh, ooh, ooh, my voice is cringy. Ugh. I will be going live after this video drops. I will be going live. Uh, I'll be announcing it on my Instagram story. So just keep in mind for that. I might, you know, I usually drop videos at around midday, 1230. So maybe at like 1, 1 30, I'll go live sometime around there just so we can interact about the video at hand. So yeah, just stay in tune for that. Until then, guys, make sure you have a good day and stay safe from the Rona. Later. <coughs> <coughs>